So a couple of disclaimers before we get going. Number one, this specific process only works on Windows because both the programs we're going to be using run via executables, which are Windows only. So sorry if you're using Mac OS or Linux. Though if you're on Linux, I imagine you're probably used to having to use a virtual machine at this point. Number two, this is not the only way to do this. It's just that this particular method is probably the most elegant despite needing a couple of third-party programs to work. That being said though, if you do continue to struggle and can't seem to get this to work, I'll have my contact information in the description because it just so happens I have technical support certifications slash experience so I can lend a hand if need be because, I mean, let's be real, you've probably come really far making your own map. Now you gotta put up with this crap so hopefully I can alleviate your troubles. Number three. You're probably wondering about custom content. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't fully understand how the process works because according to people who've played my maps, which do use custom content, they have never seen nor heard it, and I've used literally every program listed on the Valve Developer Wiki, so for now, you'll have to look elsewhere. Why don't we make sure we've got all of the necessary files and programs ready before we start. First, go to my GitHub and download Gmod Prepub WPF at releases and whatever the most recent release is. Once you get that tiny program, you'll also need Crowbar from Zek McCaw and friends on his slash hers slash their GitHub. And once that's done, make sure you've got the following files ready. Number one, your compiled map file, which will be in the .bsp format. If you can't see file extensions, go to here on Windows 10 and here on Windows 11. If you only have the VMF file from Hammer or whatever level editor you're using, then use F9 in the editor or this button to compile the map. The BSP file should then be in both the maps folder in Gary's mod and wherever your VMF file is stored at. Number two, a thumbnail for the map screen. Now, technically, you don't need a thumbnail for this to work, and in fact, the functionality for it on my program is completely optional, but I urge you to use one anyways because it helps distinguish your maps from others in the Gary's Mob map selection screen, which is where this will show up at. If you do decide to create one, remember that the aspect ratio needs to be 1 to 1. So what this means essentially is that the width and height are the same, and the shape of the image is a perfect square. So the resolution would look something like 1024 by 1024. Also keep in mind that the image's format needs to be PNG. Number 3. A preview image for the workshop. Same as the in-game thumbnail, just use a 1 to 1 aspect ratio dot PNG image. Number 4. It probably goes without saying, but make sure you know what drive you have Gary's Mod installed on. If you don't know, go to Steam, then Gary's Mod's library page, then the cog icon, then manage, then browse local files. Keep this path in mind because if it's not on the C drive and or you're using a beta branch of the game, then you will need to grab gmad.exe off my GitHub at gmod prepub wpf, then releases, then gmad.exe. Hey, you still with us? Yeah, I yeah, just zoned out for a second there. I'll explain how the process works briefly, then give you a step-by-step -step on how to get there. So, you want to upload your Gary's Mod map to the Steam Workshop. Well, before you do that, you need to create a GMA file. That's where my program comes into play, and getting it on the Workshop is where Crowbar comes into play. While I could implement basic functionality for uploading maps, Crowbar does it so much better that I'd be a fool to try and compete with that. So, let's open up Gary's Mod Pre-Publishing Helper and get to it. First things first, you're going to need a name for the GMA file. I would make it whatever you called your map, minus any special characters or spaces, should it have any. Then, you'll need a path to your BSP file that I mentioned earlier, so hopefully you already have that on hand. Once that's done, it's time for the thumbnail. Like I said, it's not required, but I strongly suggest you create one anyways for the reasons I already stated, making sure the aspect ratio is 1 to 1 and the format is .png. After you have your thumbnail all done, you can then choose your map tags. According to Facepunch's own website, you can only have up to two tags, so 0, 1, or 2 tags. And you can even have identical tags, but why you do that is beyond me. It's not too hard to explain, so let's move on. gmad.exe is an interesting field. If you'll remember, when we went to see where Gary's Mod itself is installed, and it was on the C drive, you can click the Use Default Path button. If Gary's Mod is installed on a different drive, then you'll need to browse wherever Gary's Mod is downloaded, then bin, then gmad.exe. If there is no gmad.exe and or you're using a beta build of the game, then go download it from my GitHub through the other download at the release section. Finally, when that is done, select a path that you want to use for the folder that gets created into the GMA file and the GMA file itself. I often use the desktop, so I included a nifty little button to set it to that. 
Then, once everything is done, you can click the Create GMA button. If any field is incorrect, you'll be notified via the console. If you have any issues and you don't know how to fix it, send me the log file, which will be in a logs file folder wherever you downloaded my program to. Fantastic, now you got a GMA file created. Let's upload it to the workshop. First, open up Crowbar and go to the Publish tab. Then, under Game, select Gary's Mod, then make sure you click Draft and fill in the field's name and description. After that, select your GMA file that we created using my program, and under Preview Image, use the workshop image you made earlier. Then, under Tags, just use the one that you used for the .gma file, and make sure for the type you use map. I'm not sure why they have you do it again for the workshop, but just go along with it. For visibility, I recommend leaving it as hidden, because you may want to add pictures and videos on the Steam Workshop page before everyone sees it, but that's up to you. Then, when you got all that done, click this button here. Speaking of uploading pictures and videos, to go to the workshop page, you can click this button here. Then when you're on the Steam Workshop page, you can click this button to upload any pictures and videos that you have. The images can be any aspect ratio you want, I believe. And to add videos, make sure they're uploaded to YouTube. So if you've been working on a map and you want people to play it, it might be wise to have a trailer on YouTube since it lets people know your map exists on YouTube. And on Steam, it'll give some insight into your map if you did your trailer like that. Workshop pages are pretty much identical to Steam games, except when you update the map, the description text might get cut off, so make sure you have that saved beforehand elsewhere. If you do want to update your map, you just need to go to Crowbar, and using a newly created GMA file with your updated map, you click the Update button, and your right is ran. And that's a wrap. Congratulations, you've uploaded your Gary's Mod map to the workshop. If you had any issues whatsoever, do not hesitate to reach out to me, be it in the comments, my Steam, or Discord, Links down in the description. I'd say Twitter or Reddit, but I deleted my accounts for both of those. With this video, I'm going to make it my mission to respond to every single comment on here that asks for help because I am dedicated to making sure your guys' mapping dreams are not stomped into the dirt because of a minor technical mishap that could probably be resolved easily. I cannot stress this enough. Make sure you send your log files because I did not spend all that time writing two classes for debugging only for them to not be used by the people who need them the most. Anyways, that's about it for me. I hope loads of people play your map, and as a matter of fact, feel free to send them to me too, because I'd love to play your map and give you feedback on it. I'll see you fools later, and have, have fun. fun.